Elsewhere on the Iberian Peninsula, mating pairs of white storks continue to incubate their eggs. This is a modern household, with parents sharing the housework equally. After building the nest together, the parents take turns to look after it and keep it warm. Being a parent means making sacrifices for the future of your offspring. Rain or shine, one of any pair of parent storks will always make sure the eggs stay at the right temperature, while the other keeps the nest in good shape, even building an extension if necessary. About a month after the eggs were laid, the first cracking noises are heard. This year, the little storks arrive hungry. Like all their other family chores, when it comes to feeding the little ones, both white stork parents share the work. Little by little, the season brings more and more baby storks to the neighborhood. And that means stork fathers and mothers are busier than ever. If they want their chicks to grow healthy and strong, they bring food to the nest non-stop. And so the forest population swells with hungry, noisy chicks, always clamoring after the attention of their parents.
great gray shrikes are among the busiest parents in the forest. As well as feeding their chicks, they have to, well, change their diapers. sunset, the neighborhood begins to quieten down, and the familiar bill clattering of the little white storks signals the parents' hard day's work has come to an end. The arid forests of southwest Madagascar are home to a primate that undoubtedly knows how to enjoy life. With its long black and white striped tail, the kata, or ring-tailed lemur, is easily recognized. On cold winter mornings, catters gather to carry out one of their favorite tasks, warming themselves in the sun's early rays. These lemurs are true worshippers of the Sun King. Their morning meditation happens in their habitual pose, the lotus position, with their legs spread to expose as much of themselves as possible to the warmth of the sun. And they can spend hours like this in this utopian paradise, scratching and licking their lips. But all good things must come to an end. And today's journey to enlightenment comes to a pretty abrupt one. Baby lemurs. And they come with supercharged batteries. But since the parental peace has been shattered, first things first. Nobody gets away without a good morning bath, or at least lick. So the little ones submit to the daily full-body salivary shower. And full-body means Full body. Once the parents are satisfied that their little ones are finally clean enough, it's breakfast. 
In ring-tailed lemur society, mothers are in charge. So everyone follows them in order to find food. Unfortunately, the thorny forests offer few tender shoots, and even when you find them, you must be very careful not to get spiked in the process. Those sifakas are like the fakirs of the thorny forest, and this bed of nails poses no problems for them. The ring-tailed lemurs look on, jealously wishing they too could jump through the branches without pricking themselves to reach the juiciest foliage. With their impressive jumping skills, the Sifakas are clearly the flashiest parents of the thorny forest. But not to be outdone, the katas have their own set of tricks. Unlike sifakas who love the aerial life, these lemurs spend a lot of their time on the ground, and that gives them a wide range of possibilities when it comes to finding new sources of food. Among them, crunchy, delicious shield bugs. Why do these little ones have to be on top of their parents all the time? They barely let them breathe or eat in peace. But let's not get distracted. This place is full of goodies, even if they're not the easiest snack to catch. To catch these tricky little bugs requires the lemur's full attention, and that means they forget how dangerous it is to wander across open land. Hungry birds of prey know this.
Sound the retreat. There's no time for dessert. Fortunately, the dense woodland nearby gives them shelter from winged predators. Sometimes, going vegetarian is better than going out in the open. And fruit and leaves have the advantage of being less elusive, too. With their stomachs full, and after such a tiring day, the little ones will fall asleep a lot easier. And so the adults lie down for a while to take advantage of the calming last rays of the afternoon sun. Or perhaps that's too much to pray for. Finland is located in the northernmost region of the European continent. The month of April brings a considerable improvement in the weather, encouraging the first brown bears of the season to wake up from hibernation. Still a bit groggy, they head to southern shores in search of food. But mothers with cubs will not come out of their dens for another two months, and then Finally, it's time to jump into the world. Of course, the cubs do so under the ever watchful eye of their mother. This little family will stay together for two years. Their mother has yet to teach her cubs enough life lessons for them to be able to fend for themselves. Unfortunately, while learning is an adventure, it's not always the fun kind, and straying too far from your mother can put you in serious danger. The increasing temperature has also stimulated male bears' hormones, and now they sniff around relentlessly looking for females to mate with. All male bears in heat want to extend their own bloodline, so cubs are a nuisance to be eliminated to allow their mothers to become receptive again. This male is getting closer, and Mother Bear has just realized that one of her cubs has fallen behind.
At this point, the mother must make a terrible choice. Helping the cub that is in danger would mean putting all the others in just as much peril. little cub has managed to catch up. And the best place for the little bear family to take refuge is between their mother's paws. As long as they stay by her side, they'll have less to worry about. Costa Rica. Night is falling in the lush tropical rainforest. The combination of heat and the abundance of water makes this ecosystem the perfect place for many forms of life, including more than 180 species of frog, to hide among its humid foliage. Frogs can not only breathe through their lungs, but their permanently hydrated skin also allows them to absorb oxygen directly from the air. So these amphibians don't need to live near water. The high levels of atmospheric moisture means they live in it almost. And that has the advantage of allowing them to travel long distances to look for a mate, find new territories, and even to lay their eggs in unlikely places. Some frogs, like this red-eyed tree frog, may lay up to 40 eggs each time it reproduces. These frogs stick their eggs onto the undersides of leaves. Out of water, they're safe from aquatic predators, and so the chances of the tadpole's survival are maximized. But you're never safe from all the dangers of the jungle. Some species of snakes have evolved to specialize in roaming the greenery to find the frog's succulent eggs. And when they find a leaf hiding this tasty snack, they devour the eggs. Their mother can do nothing about it. Fortunately for the amphibian, 
these tropical caviar lovers have their fill quickly. Perhaps it's an unwritten rule of jungle dining etiquette. Never finish your plate. And it's in the snake's own interest. If not, they wouldn't be able to eat again in the near future. Inside a tree trunk, somewhere on the Iberian Peninsula, a large family of small mice are in their rodent nursery. This adult female mouse is just one and a half months old, but she's already responsible for raising her first litter. Twelve more than hungry baby mice. Although still blind and deaf, they have an excellent sense of smell, and this allows them to locate their mother with her nutritious milk. They won't open their eyes for about twelve days, during which time they're utterly defenseless. Even adult mice do not have a particularly well-developed sense of sight, so this mother also uses the characteristic smells of her young to recognize them. Unfortunately for the tiny rodents, they're not the only ones who guide themselves in this world of odors. With its strong scent, the rodent family has caught the attention of an oscillated lizard, a large reptile that uses its forked tongue to detect airborne particles. The lizard could be said to devour smells first, and then the little mice themselves. If the reptile finds them, the mother will have little chance of saving herself or her young. But fortunately for the little mammals, adult mice have excellent hearing, and no matter how stealthy a reptile may be, the slightest hint of an intruder sets off all alarms. With her whiskers brushing the walls, the mother mouse can navigate the dark galleries. When you're this small and helpless, the best offense is a good defense. But time is against her. She has to move quickly if she's to transfer them all into a deeper part of the tree trunk where the lizard won't be able to get to.
just in time. By moving her little pups from one end of the trunk to the other, she's dispersed their scent through the whole of her little den. And try as it might, the lizard, now totally disoriented, will not find them today.